This video gives a proof of the heine borel theorem. This is a super useful theorem that says that a subset X of Rn is a compact space in the com subspace topology if and only if it is a closed and bounded subset of Rn. I won't give a complete proof of this fact. Instead, I'll sketch the proof. But many sections I'll prove completely. So let me enumerate sort of the steps I'll go through first in the proof. So step one is going to be to show that if X contained in Rn is compact, then X is bounded. And step two will be to say that if X in Rn is compact, then X is closed. These two steps are fairly straightforward. The second step relies on the fact that Rn is Hausdorff and is true more generally for any subset of any Hausdorff space. Step one and step two together will prove this direction of the if and only if. Proving the other direction is a little more complicated. So for step three, we'll prove that a closed interval in R1 is compact, a fact we've been throwing around a lot but haven't proved yet. Step four is the step that we'll omit completely. And that's the step to show that the product, AB times AB times AB and so on, N times, is compact. By this notation, I mean the set of X1 through Xn in Rn such that a is less than or equal to xi is less than or equal to b for each xi, where 1 is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to n. In other words, it's like an n-dimensional cube in Rn. The fact that this product is compact is actually a special case of a more general fact that the product of compact spaces is compact. But again, we won't prove this step. Step five will be to show that if X contained in Y is a closed subset of a compact space, that is X in Y is closed and Y is compact, then X is also compact. Finally, step six, we'll put all this together. In step six, we'll show that if X in Rn is closed and bounded, then X will be contained in some product of intervals. And so it will be a closed subset of a compact space and therefore compact. So now let's prove some of these steps. Let's start with step one. Step one, remember, is to say that if X in Rn is compact, then X is bounded. So the proof is consider the, the open balls BK around the origin for k equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. These balls form an open cover of Rn, so the BKs intersected with x form an open cover of x in the subspace topology. Since x is compact, there's a finite subcover. So there is a finite subcollection say BK1 intersection X through BKI intersection X that covers X. 
let's let m be the maximum of these k1 through ki. Then the ball with that radius covers x also. That's because the finitely many balls are all nested, so the one with the largest radius contains them all. And therefore, by definition, x is bounded. So that proves step one, that a compact subset of Rn is bounded. Now step two is to show that a compact subset of Rn is closed. That is, a closed subset of Rn. We'll prove this by showing that its complement is open. So let's take a point y in the complement of x. Now, for any point a in x, since Rn is Hausdorff, we can find two sets that are open in R, one around A and one around Y that are disjoint. I'll write that in words. We can find, I'll call it U sub A containing A and I'll call it V sub A containing Y that are open sets in Rn such that the two open sets are disjoint. Again, this is because Rn is Hausdorff. Well, notice that these u sub a's actually cover all of x. So the set of u sub a intersection x, where a for all a's in x, covers x because um, every a is contained in u sub a intersection x. So this is an open cover of x in the, in the subspace topology, and since x is compact, we know that there's a finite subcover. I'll call it u sub a sub 1 through u sub a sub k. Now recall that the v sub a sub 1s through v sub a sub k's are open sets around the point y. And since each v sub a sub i is disjoint from the corresponding u sub a sub i, if we take the intersection of the v sub a sub i from i equals 1 to k, that is going to be disjoint from the union of the u sub a sub i's. That's because anything in this intersection is in each of the, the, the v sub a sub i's, and so it's, if it's in v sub a sub 1, it can't be in u sub a sub 1. If it's in v sub a sub 2, it can't be in u sub a sub 2. So it can't be in any of these, these u's. Now, the intersection of finitely many open sets is open. Furthermore, it's disjoint from x because the, the, these finitely many u's cover x and, and this intersection is disjoint from the union of these u's. So this intersection of these v's, which contains y, since hv contains y, is an open neighborhood of y in Rn that is contained in the complement of x. And that is exactly what we need to show to show that this complement is open. Therefore, x is closed in Rn as we wanted. So far, we have proved that if x in Rn is compact, then x is closed and bounded. Now let's work on showing the converse. For step three, we're going to show that a closed interval from A to B in Rn is compact.
we have to show this from first principles, of course. We can't use the fact that it's closed and bounded to show it's compact, because that's the part of the theorem that we're trying to prove. So let's consider some open cover of the interval a to b. Let's let w be the set of all y in a, b, such that the interval from a to y is covered by some finite subcover. W is non-empty because if you think about the fact that, that the point A itself has to be contained in some, some open set, uh, then there's certainly some Y's in here that are also contained in that open set. Since W is non-empty, and bounded by the least upper bound principle, there is a least upper bound for W. I'll call it Z. I'm going to claim that Z is actually equal to B. Because if not, if Z is less than B, then there has to be some open set in our, our open cover that contains Z. That open set will also contain some points that are a little bit left to the left of Z and some points that are a little bit to the right of Z, since Z is not B. I'll call those points like Y1 and Y2. Now, since Z is a least upper bound, there has to be some little Y1 in that open set around Z that that is in W, because otherwise Z wouldn't be the least upper bound. And therefore, we can cover everything up through A to Y1 with finitely many open sets, which means by adding on that little extra open set around Z, we've still got a finite collection of open sets that contains everything from A to Z. And therefore, Z is, is in W, and in fact, it'll even contain everything up to y2, so, so y2 will be in w. But that'll mean that z is not really an upper bound for w at all, since something bigger than it is in w. And this proves my claim that z is equal to b. Now, a similar argument can be used to show that the entire interval from a to b can be covered by a finite subcover, since b itself is in some open set, which means that some little y3 or something close to b is in that open set, and uh, since b is a least upper bound, y3 is in w, and so we can cover everything up through y3 with finitely many open sets. And then when we add in this last open set that covers b and, and y3, we'll still have a finite subcollection that contains everything. So uh, there is a finite subcover of the interval AB, and so that proves that AB is compact. Step four is the step that we're not going to prove. That's the step that says the closed cube in Rn is compact. So let's move on to step five, which says that if Y is compact and X is closed in Y, then x is also compact. To prove this, let's consider an open cover of x. Since x is a subspace of y, this means a collection of open sets, say v alpha in y, such that x is the union of the v alphas intersected with x. Let's augment this collection of the v-alphas. The union of the v-alphas, let's combine that with the open set y minus x. Since the v-alphas contain all points of x and y minus x contains all points that aren't in x, this union has to contain all of y. So we have an open cover of y, and since y is compact by assumption, we have a finite subcover that covers y.
So that means we have like finitely many of these V alphas. I'll call it V alpha 1 through V alpha K. And maybe we also need the Y minus X. These together cover Y. But the, that would mean that these V, v alphas, these finitely many V alphas, have to cover X since we certainly don't need Y minus X to, to cover any points of X. So we started with an arbitrary cover of X, and we found a finite subcover, and so that means that X is compact. So now we're ready for the grand finale. So that's step six. We're going to prove that if X in Rn is closed and bounded, then X is compact. So let's assume x is closed and bounded. x bounded means that x is contained in some ball around the origin. But that means that x is also contained in the cube, negative m to m, cross negative m to m, and so on, since that, that ball of radius m is contained in that cube. But step four was to say that this is a compact space, and since x is closed in Rn, x is also a closed subset of this cube. You can see this by thinking of the complement of x and rn, which is open, and so that complement intersected the cube is also open. And this is just the complement of x in the cube. Now by step five, since, since x is a closed subset of a compact space, that means that x is a compact space. And we have finished our proof of the Honey-Burrell theorem.